First, for what purpose does the gentlewoman from Oklahoma seek Madam recognition? Madam Speaker, I claim time in opposition. Gentlewoman is recognized. Thank you. I rise in opposition to Amendment 22. I believe this amendment will undermine our ability to appropriately deal with human rights abuses and aggressions towards the United States. This amendment would require the Secretary of State, in coordination with the Secretary of Energy, to submit a report to Congress on how U.S. sanctions are affecting our ability to adapt to climate change and promote environmental justice, among other things. First, let me remind my friends across the aisle that we are not, I'm sorry, that we're meant to be discussing the competitiveness bill today, not a climate bill. This bill is meant to address the Chinese Communist Party's growing aggression and to ensure the United States remains the world leader in science and technology. This amendment doesn't prioritize our competitiveness and it doesn't help us face the threat from China. Worse, it could hinder our abilities to address that threat. Let's not forget sanctions are for countries that have committed inexcusable offenses against their own people or the United States. It seems to me that the purpose of this amendment is to show that our sanctions against China, who is committing forced labor crimes every day, are actually hurting progress towards adapting to climate change. Essentially, this amendment places technological adaptations to climate change on the same footing as forced labor and genocide. I fully believe that the United States has the capacity to develop innovative technologies to continue to reduce our emissions and mitigate the effects of climate change. And I do not accept that to do this, we need to prioritize China's innovation over their forced labor. Addressing climate change does not require sacrificing American ideals and standards. We can best address global climate change by innovating in America and holding China accountable, not by giving them a pass. I would much rather look at how the United States can encourage more participation in research and development than drive innovation. Let's support our research enterprise, our workforce, our access to domestic critical minerals, and yes, let's actually identify innovative ways that we can combat global climate change. Not once has the Department of Energy or the National Science Foundation come to us to say that our stance against forced labor or child labor is hindering their ability to research, develop, and demonstrate clean energy technologies. This is a made up problem which this report is trying to solve with a predetermined solution. I urge my colleagues to support your constituents by putting the United States first and opposing this amendment. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I reserve the balance of my time.